Hello everybody, welcome to the latest Tom's chat room. Um, I'm not I am knocking these out really quick and really often um, like your regular daily poo. But uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this episode of the chat room uh, is going to be the first chat room that I've done with a non-human guest. My first ever um, my first ever chat room where I am joined by a real life living breathing Pokemon. I am joined by the leader of Team Caterpie. I am joined by Hardy Tech Yo Yo. I got it right. What's going on, guys? I am Hardy Tech Yo Yo. Thank you for having me, Tom. No problem, dude. Uh, I hope I got your name right because I, I have I have thought. What that... are a few people that actually did? So congratulations. It's because <laughs> I've I've heard plenty of people uh, speak it. So you know, I mean, I I used to say TKO or something. So you know. <laughs> Uh, most common mispronunciation is Tokyo, actually. Oh, Hardy Tokyo. Yeah, so I can see. I can see why. Where I can see where people do that, you know. But so obviously you're um you're 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 more known for your um YouTube channel uh where you play um well, it's mostly Pokemon games, right? Uh, it's nothing but Pokemon oh, it's games. Pokemon so, games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Um. So first things first. Sort of tell us a little bit about how you got into YouTube. Uh. You know. Uh. What. What. What was it that made you think, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play video games and let people watch me do it. Uh, well, I did gaming videos before Pokemon, so I don't know if you like, want the very beginning or how I got into Pokemon. Well, a um, bit of both, really. Sort of, why did you want to, you know, what, how, why did you start doing, doing, vid doing gaming videos to start with? Uh, well, back in, I think, 2010... I was just started like playing Call of Duty for the very first time, and you could probably see where this is going. And I ended up seeing some videos of for like Call of Duty. I'm like, wow, this is really awesome. People are like taking their game and they're making videos out of it. And I've always like loved like making creative things and finding like ways to express myself. So I thought this would be like a really exciting hobby. And I ended up getting like this little seven dollar capture card to record my screen. And I started making Call of Duty videos. And I did that for about 15 months until I'm like got really bored with it. So I started doing Pokemon. So obviously, um, you know, you, 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 um, there's only so, there's only so much you can do with, um, uh, Call of Duty games. So when you, when you, when you, when you decided to do Pokemon, what was it that made you sort of, I mean, obviously you've said, you said, you said you got really bored with doing the, um, Call of Duty, but when you switched over to Pokemon, what was it about Pokemon that drew you into doing it? Were you a big fan prior to that or? Uh, well, I was really, really big into Pokemon when I was younger, and I stopped playing, like, about, like, a month or so after Diamond and Pearl came out, because I know I beat Pearl, and then I just kind of put down Pokemon and didn't play it for a long time. I didn't even play Black and White when they first came out, and I ended up, when I got with my network, who was TGN, I saw that there was a guy on there doing a Nuzlocke run of Leaf Green, and I had never heard of a Nuzlocke run before, but I decided to check it out, and... I ended up just absolutely falling in love with this Let's Play, and it made me like rediscover my love for Pokemon. So I started playing the game again, and eventually, when I was starting to get bored of Call of Duty, I thought, well, maybe it'd be cool to do Pokemon like this guy I've been watching. And I was absolutely terrified to start doing Pokemon on my channel because I didn't think people would like it. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, because my subscribers were built off of Call of Duty, I thought they were just going to like reject it and hate on it. And from like the very first video. I think I only put like three or four more Call of Duty videos up, and the Pokemon just completely took over my channel because people loved it. So now, um, obviously, your um, your you you know your um, the blurb on your Twitter page men mentions you as the leader of Team Caterpie. So can you give us a bit more information as to what Team Caterpie is and why you're the leader? Well, uh, Team Caterpie is what I like to call like my subscriber base. I guess you know. Uh, it originally got created, like, I think it was around last August when uh, Shofu ended up getting strikes on his channel for copyright claims and everyone's getting all paranoid because his channel had got shut down. And everyone's all paranoid that, like, other big PokeTubers were going to get their channel shut down. So I'm like, well, I better make a backup channel just in case. And I was having a lot of trouble trying to think of a name. And eventually I'm just like, well, just go with Team Caterpie, so, which actually is my second channel, which I do vlogs on. And once I thought of Team Caterpie, I'm just like, well, that'll just be what I call everybody. And I'm the captain because I'm the best freaking Caterpie in the world, and I deserve to be captain. So, 
So obviously, um, you know, uh, you've done you've done loads of se- loads of series across um, the whole time you've been doing um, you've been doing videos for YouTube. So have you got a particular favorite thus far? Um, I don't know. I've I've liked most of my series for like just different reasons from like nostalgia. There was a few series I I did that I wasn't very big fans of, but if I had to pick, I would say either. Uh, my Emerald Randomizer or my Fire Red Omega Nuzlocke would have been my favorites because both of those were just a lot of fun to do. I know I think I had the most fun making YouTube videos when I was doing Emerald because like every night I would do like 40 to 45 minute videos and just never get bored, never lose any kind of energy. And that's when my channel really started to grow and get some attention was during that period. So it was just so much fun. So, um, you know, T- tell us a little. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know. Uh, I mean, one of the things you're doing at the moment is uh, you've you've started. A, you, uh, well, at least for the, the the first time I've seen this happen, you've started a little trend with with people making um, tribute Twitter accounts to your Pokemon. Um, <laughs> do you did you encourage that, or did somebody just do that and you sort of said I like that, and other people copied it, or you know how did that uh, how did that happen? I'm following I, about I... six of them. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had absolutely nothing to do with that. I think, like, on the second or third video of mine, someone had made a Doorbell to Spiel account, and it just really kind of blew up from there. People started making accounts for all the different Pokemon I have, and then uh, Twitter came along. I believe Sipper the Heracross was the first Twitter account, and now I think yeah. all the Pokemon have Twitter accounts. <laughs> so uh, I have, like, the most... Uh, Social media active Pokemon team in history. So. Yeah, your your fan base your fan base certainly seemed to um, uh, get into what you're doing because I actually sort of because um, as I said I'm following a couple of, a couple of your Pokemon and um, I uh, <coughs> I'm I, I was flicking back through some of their um, video some of their sort of comments and their um, tweets on Twitter and um, they're not just they're, they're not they're not just like Oh, you know, this is what I. This is what happened to me in this video. This is what happened to me in this video. No, they really are role playing it properly. You know, commenting on stuff like it's bloody cold in this Pokeball and stuff like that. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, I, I think it's like really awesome what they're doing. As long as they keep it like in control, because they have gotten like a little out of control with their comments on the videos, just like completely taking over the comment section. Yeah. Which gets really annoying, but the fact that they've like just taken these inanimate Pokemon in my games and they've like created their own little personalities and their own little like feuds between each other, yeah. and I think that's just absolutely amazing. That I didn't have anything to do with this. That people just came together. These random people came together and just started making this little rope. I guess role playing group out of this, yeah. all because inspired by the Pokemon videos that I make. Just blows my mind that anybody would do that. It 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 is it is really cool. And as as I said, and as I said, this is the first time I've seen anything like this come from a um, a Pokemon YouTuber. And sort of, I I, I watch hun- hundreds of different videos across different people, and this is the first time I've seen anything like this. And it, it is it is really really um cool. So obviously um. Uh, in terms of Pokemon, have you got a favorite all-time Pokemon? I know, I, feel... I know. There's an obvious, there's an obvious one here. <laughs> you see, I feel obligated to say Caterpie, but if we're not including him, yeah. Um, I honestly don't have a favorite Pokemon. I always find it like really hard to pick favorites as like far as Pokemon and stuff goes, because I, I would look at a Pokemon and I'll be like, oh, it's so cute, and then I'll be, oh, you'll be my new favorite. Now I'll see another yeah. Pokemon, and I want him to be my favorite, and I want this other one to be my favorite. I just, I'm a really indecisive person, so it's like impossible for me to pick a favorite as far as that goes. Um, now, obviously, um, we're, we're 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 talking here. We're talking at the moment uh, uh, on uh, in sort of uh, early to mid early to mid uh, June. So E3 was a short period ago, and I mean we may as well we may as well cover this uh, at, le- at least in some element. Um, fairy type. Yeah. Um. Uh. Do you approve or do you disapprove? I, I approve. You know, I think it's much better than what like one of the other rumored ones was with sound. I thought sound was would have been kind of stupid. I actually like fairy. 
I think now Jigglypuff's going to become like the most overpowered thing in Pokemon. Oh yeah, because it's going to be like the ultimate Dragon Slayer. But yeah, uh, um, I I think it's interesting. I heard like a rumor at one point, like this, and when I read about this rumor, it like made a lot of sense about like the love type. Because, yeah. like, Sylveon was introduced on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. And they just had, like, all these other facts that would have supported it being love type. So I thought that would have been cool. But I definitely think Fairy is a much better choice. And I don't know why people are complaining about it, saying it's all girly and stuff. And they're, like, not going to call it Fairy type. And uh, I think it's better than Light type. I don't I, think Light I thought, type would have made a lot of sense. I thought it would have been Light because Light being the opposite to Dark. And we've already got Dark type. Well, but I remember I saw this video where someone was talking about like the types they would want to see and they were talking about the light type and they were saying that it would be kind of difficult to do light type because I mean, do you think like angel kind of light or do you think like light bulb? You know, which kind of light are you referring well, to? Well, sort, sort of a bit a, a bit of both really, sort of anything anything that's got visible light bulbs would, would sort of work, but also anything angelic because obviously... Um, uh, what what you look at when you think of uh, light versus dark is the similarities between Gengar and Clefable. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but silhouette wise, they look exactly the same. Uh, I have heard like Gengar is Clefable's shadow, but oddly enough, neither of those two are light or dark types. So, but it in the <laughs> same sense, wouldn't it fairy kind of be the opposite of dark? I mean, dark's like demonic and evil and fairies. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time you saw an evil fairy? I mean, they're like these lovely little like yeah. good light things. So in a sense, fairy is pretty much the opposite of dark. So, so um, obviously, uh, when fairy type was announced, we were only shown um, four Pokemon that fit into that gap. Those being... Jigglypuff, Meryl, Gardevoir, and Sylveon. Uh, so obviously, uh, are there any other strain? Are there any, are there any other odd picks from the Pokemon universe that you think would fit into that type? Well, for the record, if Clefairy isn't a fairy type, I'm probably just going to give up Pokemon because that <laughs> wouldn't make any sense. It has but, to be. Um, some things I've had in mind were possibly like Dunsparce could oh, be yeah. a fairy type um uh like uh i can't remember it's chancy and blissy oh yeah and, 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 and anything pink is probably a fair it's probably fair play you know yeah, um, yeah. i'm trying to think of like a pokemon that's not pink <laughs> <laughs> i mean um uh what do you think they're gonna i mean obviously gardevoir being fairy type um some people are saying that they think that's going to be the entire evolution line so uh you know rolts and then uh uh all going up that line but i curlier and then gardevoir but i don't think that's what they're going to do i think they're going to keep rolts and curlier as pure psychic and then if you evolve it into gardevoir it picks up subtype fairy because you can also evolve curlier into something else can't you um, yeah, you can evolve it into Glade, which is part fighting. Which is part fighting. So obviously, um, that's that 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 that's how I think they that's how I think they're gonna do it. Um, but I I um, I mean the only, the one thing that I'm negative on about the fairy type. I mean, I think it's cool having a ty- a new type that we can move Pokemon around in and stuff like that. Is it's because I favor dragons. And now, obviously. Uh, my ultimate power dragon team that I've been using um, on the online game is now weak to Jigglypuff. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember reading, um, like, Nintendo said that the main... I, I think they said this during, like, their E3 conference, that the main reason that Fairy was introduced was to actually balance the dragon type, because, I mean, dragon... It was only weak to two things, one being dragon and the other being ice, and it resists a lot of things, so... I think it did kind of need that balance. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of dragons, I guess they were kind of balanced by the fact that most of them were either ground or flying type, so they're quad yeah. weak to ice. But I think it's good having a third type be strong against dragon to just kind of help balance it out. And I believe a fairy is also being weak to poison, so now poison will actually be strong against a second type because poison is arguably like one of the worst types offensively, being only mm-hmm. strong against grass. Yeah. And. 
So I think uh, adding another thing that poison could actually do damage against would be also a way to uh, help balance poison out as well. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever ever used a a poison type as a poison type attacker. I've more so used poison as a subtype. One of my favorite things to use poison with is um it was in my recent in the recent series I'm I've I've been recording for my channel um my jumpluff which I nicknamed ambush because it's like the cutest thing in the world it's got toxic giga drain um leech seed and um I think mega drain so base so uh, I, you know set up toxic and leech seed and everything dies uh but you do know jumpluff isn't a poison type right yeah, um yeah but I mean Jump Toxic seems to work, you know. Well, like, yeah, but I mean, like every Pokemon. So, <laughs> I think <laughs> like virtually every Pokemon. I think any Pokemon that like learns TMs can actually learn Toxic. Yeah. So obviously, um, you know, let, let's talk a bit more general about Pokemon. I mean, have you been watching the recent series of the anime? Uh, I've like follow like the spoilers of what happens, but I don't actually watch it. All I know is like Charizard just came back and. Butterfree is apparently Ash's Butterfree is going to be making some big dramatic return. I think that's just about to air in Japan, so we won't actually get it We're here. We're not going to get that for months. ages. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> so you know, um, what what are your um, you know, do you do you like the idea of of them bringing back some of Ash's old Pokemon? Uh, I like the nostalgia. I'm not surprised that like of all the Pokemon they picked Charizard oh, yeah. to bring back. Um, I think it's a good idea to kind of like not completely ignore the past like 15 years of the anime yeah. uh i mean so many, ash has like 50 pokemon that are just sitting there at oats lab and he like doesn't even remember that they exist so yeah it's kind of good to play into that fact that you know he's still act they still remember the fact that he has these pokemon so and um as 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 um uh we were discussing on um uh facebook yesterday um, he promised to pick that Pidgeot, Pidgeot up about 10 years ago. He still hasn't gone back for it. No, oh, that poor Pidgeot. It finally, it was Pidgeot for so long. It finally yeah. evolved and Ash just ditches it. Just... I've, I've, I've genuinely got this image of every, every night. It, it sits at the top of the tree and it looks up at the stars. And it says, one day he'll come back for me. One you day. know what I would like to see? I would like to see Ash when he returns to Pallet Town. He goes into Verdian Forest to go see his Pidgeot. And Pidgeot's just so mad at him, he just like goes <laughs> down and eats Ash. That would make me happy. Pidgeot just tells him to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like retribution right there. Although you gotta remember, since time like doesn't flow in Pokemon, it's probably only been like two weeks since he left. Yeah, yeah. To us it's to us it's ten years. You know, we were kids when he left that when he left that Pidgeot behind. You know, to to him it, it legitimately it was last Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously um do you like the idea do you, um are you are you completely with with them on the idea of not aging ash or would you rather that they aged him a little bit um i don't really see a problem with him staying 10 i mean what cartoon actually does age its characters to be mm. fair uh i yeah. you guys gotta you can't you gotta believe in the world of poker logic so Obviously, you can go 15 years and stay 10 years old. You can apparently be born without a father, so yeah, I'm going to question that. Um, I th I think eventually, somewhere down the line, they will they will introduce his dad. I mean, I th I, I, th I think somewhere down the line they've got to. I don't know. You think they would have done it by now? I mean, at least made some kind of reference. I mean, I think the only time they've ever actually mentioned it is once Delilah said that. I think that's her name, Delilah said that uh he's still out on his journey that's like the only time they've ever mentioned him so yeah i'd um i i would absolutely love 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 it to be like a mystery train a, a mystery trainer as a champion in a far off league maybe even whatever whatever that whatever league they decide to do when when the anime finally gets to the world that x and y is set in because eventually they're going to do that you know um, mm, yeah, I think they track. said that the uh, anime is actually beginning in October for the X and Y region. I don't, I don't remember what the region's called, but in Japan, I believe that's it's actually Kalos? beginning. Is it in Kalos, isn't it? Kalos? Kalos? 
I know it begins with a K, but I don't remember the actual pronunciation. But when 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 he finally gets to that league, I'd love I'd love there to be like I'd love there to be sort of like a shadowy trainer as like the top of that league, and then sort of that trainer's only revealed when we finally see him battle, and when we finally see him battle, he's like Ash but older. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Then they'd probably like mess it up somehow and say Ash just like traveled back in time to be the champion to face himself. So <laughs> I suppose um, you know, like uh Futurama where Fry um went back in time, slept with his grandmother and became his own grandfather. Mm, I've never happen. actually seen Futurama, so I wouldn't know the reference. So. All right, okay. <laughs> um but obviously um you know uh Pokemon is what is one one of one of your interests, but you and I have another interest in common that we can talk about. Ooh. Um, we can talk about professional wrestling. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, this is this is something that is probably not covered all that much on your YouTube stuff. For you, so for your YouTube fans, this is a new insight into you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't think I think I mentioned that I'm a fan like two or three times. So I never really talk about it, so. Well, this you know, um, obviously, um, mo- most time, most timely of things. There was a pay per view last night that um, uh, um, to that happened that happened uh, last night. Uh, that being the uh, that being the sixteenth of of um, not August, um, June. So, sort of, um, what are your highlight? What what are your favorite moments from that uh, pay per view? Uh, I thought Punk's return was definitely the highlight. I was kind of oh, yeah. like the entire night, I was or the entire match, I was expecting like possibly some kind of swerve with maybe like Heyman turning on him, but it didn't go down that way. And Punk won clean. I thought it was a great match. I his I don't know why his facial hair annoyed me so much. I know he's going it. for the I know he's going for the Wolverine look, but just yeah. the fact there's like absolutely bald in the middle just annoyed me so much i was like, um i was really hoping for when he won and the entire like as it, it would seem like the whole world was cheering him i honestly thought um when Heyman came over to sort of celebrate with him he'd knock Heyman's hand away and so, uh, well, so, that would have been cool <laughs> and sort of say i don't need you here these people would cheer these people would cheer me if i took a dump on all of them you know and sort of like <laughs> just you know cuz honestly you know eat, eat punk could have punk could have come out swung the middle finger and took a crap on the chicago flag and they'd still cheer him i don't know well that reminds me i think it was either 2009 or 2010 they had a, when punk was doing the straight edge society as his heel gimmick and they were in Chicago, and he was doing absolutely everything he could to try to get some kind of heat from this crowd. He was insulting them, calling them mm-hmm. names, and they didn't care. They were still there cheering him, and I thought yeah. it was just the funniest thing that this guy cannot be hated by Chicago. It is Punk, just not possible. Punk cannot be a heel in Chicago, and he- that's why I think um, in the match, Jericho sort of played heel- heelish a little bit, you know, and he-, he sort of had to because, you know, Punk was definitely going to be the babyface in that match. So obviously, on 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 talks of babyfaces during that night, we had double we had a double turn at some point during the night. A double turn that we haven't seen a successful double turn, as you said um, in a Twitter discussion. Um, we haven't had a double turn like that since Hart and Austin. We had uh, Dolph yeah, Ziggler. And- I thought it was very ironic that it happened to be in like the same city and in the same arena and everything as the Hard on Austin one happened. So obviously, I don't know if WWE was just like trying to pay a homage to it or what. But WWE doesn't remember that sort of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) We'd love, we'd like, we'd like them to, but WWE doesn't remember that. But I do, I do certainly like um, them turning Ziggler face because I want an excuse to cheer him because I do like the guy, you know. I don't think he's, like, a full-fledged face yet. Um, I just think it's, like, I think very soon he'll probably get that moment where he'll, like, end up turning on AJ and Big E. And I don't know if they'll just go off and be heels on their own or what, but I know a lot of people are, like, shocked and upset that Ziggler lost the title. But honestly, I see this as, like, a good thing because if they are going to go with this double turn, and they want to build Ziggler up to be like this big baby face, and having him get his retribution and winning the title again, 
I think that'd be an even bigger moment yeah. than him retaining last night. So and 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 of course, I mean WWE are definitely treating him as if he's faced though because they posted some stuff on their website um, uh, today that sort of talks up how um, talks up how. Um, uh, how hard hard working Ziggler was in that match, and how um, and how you know Alberto Del Rio went too far to stop the match. So they are de- WWE on their website are definitely pushing how um, how face Ziggler is. Well, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could just listen to the commentators in that match, and you could hear yeah. that. Uh, I go, I know, I had read something that was saying that like Chicago was the reason for the double turn because like they were cheering Ziggler and booing Del Rio. But all you had to do is listen to the commentators and you could tell like this is something they had planned with the way that Del Rio was oh, yeah. wrestling, viciously attacking the head. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were saying how Ziggler was so valiant for mm. never giving up and he wouldn't give up the fight. That was obviously, that's something you say about a guy you want to cheer, not someone you want to get people to boo. So mm. this is... This didn't have anything to do with the crowd. The crowd just did a good job of going along with it. So. Yeah, there's there's no there's no way people can people can say that they did this double turn because of the crowd. Because um anybody who says that, I direct them to watch the video on YouTube, which I will link in the description of this, um, where Ziggler wins the title, where he wins the title off from Del Rio, incidentally. That was. Um, <laughs> That was such a huge pop that night. But, that pop. I mean, yeah. that whole crowd. I don't. You can't really judge any of that crowd's reaction because that was like the crazy smart mark crowd. Uh. So, I mean, they're the ones that chanted "cotton candy" and RVD. So, <laughs> um, oh, RV, 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 RVD. Well, there we go. Um, uh, I was hoping you'd get that segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was announced during. The, it was announced during the pay per view that Rob Van Dam will be returning to the WWE. Uh, at the next pay per view, that being Money in the Bank. So, how do you think they're going to use RVD? Do you think he's going to have like um, RVD versus somebody in like a match, or do you think they're just going to slip RVD into the Money in the Bank match for one of the suitcases? I don't know. I kind of have two different opinions on this. In one case, I would think you put him in the ladder match, and you know he's going to do a good job because that's like fitting his style perfectly. Mm. But on the other hand, it's like, well, he would really kind of get overshadowed in his big return, being in the ring with seven other people. So I actually had a thought earlier of, like, him returning to face Cena for the title because that would be oh. a big return. But I don't actually – I doubt that's the direction you're going to go with. I I have, I have a feeling, if anything, I don't think they're going to do the Brian match at Money in the Bank like a lot of people think. I think mm-hmm. if they'll probably do that at SummerSlam or a little later. But – I I don't know what they're gonna do with RVD. Maybe Punk. Could yeah, work. I, I I think what they need. I think what one you know as, as you said, one thing they probably need to do is whatever match he has, he kind of needs to win because you can't do this one month build up to your big huge return and then you lose. You can't. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't go over well. No. <laughs> you, you cannot. You cannot do the big, huge return and then have him lose. So, uh, what? What about if they um, put him over? I was going to say put him over a mid card championship, but you can't do that either, really, because you've got Curtis Axel with the IC title and um, one of the Shield with the US title. So, I don't know. RVD versus Santino Morella. I don't know. I'd put my money on the Cobra. Santina's pretty dangerous. <laughs> the Cobra versus um, Mr. Monday Night, Mr. Pay-Per-View. Um, that, I would put money to see that. Yeah. Sounds like match of the year to me. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a match of the year candidate right there. Um, so, obviously, um, uh, we you know we talked about Dolph Ziggler and his uh, title loss and babyface turn, so to speak. Um AJ Lee faced faced off against Caitlyn for the Divas title. Um, correct winner, do you think? I actually forgot that Divas can have a good match. Not gonna lie, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah, this. This kind of match like this, like, really makes me think, like, wow, I kind of miss when Lita and Trish were still around, and you saw this kind of thing on a weekly basis. I mean, the Divas once main evented Raw. Lita and Trish, their match is like a main event on Raw once, and. Yeah. Now we actually have, like, the first time in, like, five years is actually a good Divas feud. It's like, I, I'm i really happy. And I don't think, it's definitely not over from here. No. Although, I, 
I was really kind of against like yeah, like Caitlyn crying at the end. I don't know why that really just kind of got on my nerves. That I don't know. I mean, you don't see John Cena crying when he loses the WWE title. I don't. I don't think it's so much her being sad at losing that um, Divas title. What I think. What I think it is is I think it's a. It, it's it's a an over a, a, an overtly pushed into your face tease at her starting to lose her shit a little bit. I I guess. I still just think... I don't know why. Just for some reason, the crying just... I've never been a fan of that in wrestling. Just, mm. I yeah. mean, she is heartbroken. She is heartbroken because, uh, you know, the whole uh, secret admirer thing. And, uh, you know, uh, I, think, uh, I think we are going to see a more hard-edged side to her personality. I mean, um, after the match, she was walked to the back by Natalia and Layla, and um, she sort of, um, she sort of swatted them away and stormed off. So I, I kind of think we're going to see something on Raw um, coming up in a few hours, um, uh, a few hours when we're recording this, not when you guys are watching this. <clears throat> um, but uh, I think we're going to see something on Raw where it's going to be sort of, uh, where she's going to be more more mentally unhinged you know a little bit she's completely mm. losing it and um you know i i even i even think that what they'll do is for the next pay-per-view they won't do a rematch but they'll do a tag team match um aj and biggie langston versus caitlin and um some other bloke who she sort of joins up with you know and um, the perfect bloke they could do it with is they could use Cody Rhodes. Um, he, he ain't got anything. Yeah, else I could see that. You know, because the well, I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of tricky because they don't have like the best past. I suppose you know she was like really thankful that he wasn't her secret admirer, and he kind of blew her off for the Bellas. So, mm. but that I guess that's an option. I don't think they plan on turning Rhodes' face. I think Rhodes probably just doomed in the mid card forever, which is rather unfortunate. But I think I think I think I think that they're going to go more de- more down the heelish route with Caitlyn because I think she can sort of do the whole um, she can you know in order she can sort of turn it turn all of this heartache that she's gone to onto the fans. You know why didn't any of you have any um, have any support for me when? Um, uh, my entire world was shattered underneath me because if you if because obviously when she when she lost and um, the camera panned over to her and um, she sat there in the ring starting to cry and you know you've got the mascara tears rolling down the cheek um, I don't know if you heard what the crowd were chanting but I certainly did uh, yep you tapped out <laughs> you, you tapped out amongst other things so um you can't. Well, you gotta kind of take the Chicago crowd with a grain of salt because a lot of that is, you know, the more hardcore fans who are kind of assholes for the most part. So yeah, but I mean, you know, I think WWE will use that, and I think they'll sort of, you know, Caitlin will sort of say, well, you know, um, I, I put on one of the best matches of my career. I came up short. I'd had a horrendous week prior, and none of you had any respect for me. So frankly, fuck you. Sort of, you know. Um, but obviously she's not going to say fuck you to, on <laughs> PG TV. But well, that'd be know. a good way to turn heel. <laughs> <laughs> turn heel to the WWE um, uh, advertisers as well. But I, I just, I, in my mind, the way they're probably going to do this is like they're going to try to go for some big revenge story with her wanting to get revenge on AJ. Uh. I can't see them going with an like turning Caitlyn heel right now because then you'd have like absolutely no credible face diva. I mean, it, AJ and Caitlyn are kind of the only relevant divas in the entire division right now, so having mm. them both heels, I think would be a really bad idea. I mean, unless you were going to go with AJ face. I they guess. could they could well, that's something they could do if they want if they don't want to split Ziggler and Big E <laughs> and AJ's team apart, they could sort of subtly start to turn AJ back a bit face. Because they could still play up the fact that she's a little bit mentally unhinged, you know. I mean, she certainly, she certainly, they certainly played up the uh, concerned girlfriend thing when Ziggler was being helped out by the um, by the doctor. So, 
they could they could go somewhere down that line and um <clears throat> you know i mean even if they bring somebody bring a diva up from the uh uh from nxt i mean uh it's about time they brought page up mm, I, don't, I haven't actually really know anything about nxt so i can't really comment on that but i've heard a lot of good things about her though so uh, we yeah. could definitely use some fresh divas because nothing screams excitement like alicia fox so yeah um what do you think about um have you been watching you, you've obviously been watching raw so um the wyatt family I I'm excited for one thing because like I've heard a lot of good things about them and I think their act is going to be really cool and like unique. But do we really need like a, yet another stable? I'm, I'm really kind of afraid they're going to get lost in the shovel because I mean, where are they going to fit in right now? Everyone already kind of has something going on, and you're bringing in three more guys. And I heard rumors there's going to be like more than just those three. So I think, I think it's um, I think it's Wyatt. A tag team and a girl, I think. Mm, I think I, I heard it was uh, four guys and a girl. I don't remember because I know they in the one of the promos they had, they had a uh, uh, one of the girls from NXT and they had another guy from NXT in a promo. They might have just been filler, but you know they may be coming up as well. So I, I think I think there is definitely going to be a girl in that set, and um, you know that's that's sort of why I think. They push AJ more down a face line because then they can sort of do the whole um, face versus this heel Louisiana, um, this heel Louisiana sort of Wyatty kind of person, you know. Wyatty. That's the first time I've heard that word. <laughs> it was well, Wyatty. Um, I mean, it's it's difficult to sort. Of, it's dif- it's difficult to say. I, I didn't really. I, I I couldn't really think of the best way to um, the be- the best way to describe it because. Uh, it almost reminds me of like a cult leader kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very similar to the Straight Edge Society, um, uh, back in the day. Except, except they have except, hair. Yeah, except <laughs> they have hair and they're sort of. I mean, they, 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 there's there's so many hints that there's, it's an inbred inbred-y kind of. Um, um, I mean, he's doing the cult leadery thing, but. I also they are also sort of teasing the fact that you know they're from like the backwaters in Louisiana and um, they are sort of bringing up all the negative stereotypes that come from that kind of thing. I, I don't know if they'd go that far on a PG show to bring in like inbreed. And... Well, they don't they don't have to show it; they just have to tease it. And because um, I mean WWE have definitely done this sort of thing before, where they have things work on multi multi leveled um, multi leveled characters. So things work for kids. Oh, he's a bad he's a bad guy because he's got messy hair. He's a good guy because he's got spiky hair, you know, and that kind of um, you know. But then on the sort of adult level, the grown ups can look at it and go, "Well, he's clearly slept. He's clearly the result of a brother a brother sister night in the barn," you know. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever had that reaction looking at someone before. <laughs> but they can sort Maybe of. I'm just they can sort of te- they can sort of have things that work on multiple levels, and um, that's definitely something that I, I I definitely get from the Wyatt family. Mm. Eh, I guess that something like that could work, but mm, I'm not really sure what my opinion is on them. To be honest, I never even like considered that they might be inbreds. So I I I, <laughs> I, I, I definitely I, I definitely get the sort of hick vibe from them. The um the stereotype of the southern the southern US hick you know I I definitely get that sort of vibe but obviously that's a vibe that I get me I I get being in suburban England so you know <laughs> you judging us How yeah dare you <laughs> well you know um uh you know we're we're always called Bizarro Land when WWE comes over here. Because well, we, that's because you guys got the craziest freaking crowds. But we cheer for all the bad guys and boo the faces. That's just something we do over here, you know. Yeah, well, Chicago does the same thing, and New York, and a lot of like the big, uh, like wrestling crowds. You know, where you have a lot more hardcore fans. They do that. So, mm-hmm. but England is very notable for that. Yeah, um, and um, uh, letting Wade Barrett and William Regal get away with anything. That's also something we do. It's not cheating if you're in your homeland. 
No, <laughs> definitely not. And um, WWE knows that by wheeling William Regal out every time they come over here. Mm, yeah. But yeah. obviously... Well, um, this is the easiest way to get like a good pop is to just throw Regal out there. Oh, Say, yeah. Yay, cheer this guy. Yay. Yeah, and, and, we, and we will, you know. Um, so, sort of, let's, let's sort of uh, go a bit back onto topic a little. Um, <clears throat> in terms of... Uh, in terms of the next the next couple of months in re- the next couple of months in wrestling, um, how would you how would you sort of how who, who would you push and who 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 do you think is going to be your main your main important stars in the next month or so? Well, you could all but guarantee that Daniel Bryan is going to be a big player. I'm curious to know what they're going to do with Punk. I assume that we're going to get Punk and Lesnar at SummerSlam. I know that uh, after Payback last night, they had a thing on their website where they pretty much Punk said that he was going to like go separate ways than Heyman. And I would have like Heyman being upset that Punk wants to like you know go their separate ways. And maybe have Heyman get Lesnar to try to get revenge on Punk. So, hmm. um, In terms of um, Curtis, Ax- Curtis Axel winning the IC title um, last night at the pay-per-view... Um, did you like the way he did it? Because I loved it. I absolutely loved the, loved his, um, the uh, sliding into the ring while Barrett was in the um, some in the figure four and just putting his like putting his chest over his face. Uh, I thought I thought it was like showed just he was really clever move on his yeah. part. I thought it would have been kind of cool if he won it with the perfect plex, but yeah, you know I can't get too picky, I suppose. But I, either way, um, I thought it was a good victory. I, I I also saw something that I'm not sure other people did in terms of um, when he uh, when he won and the announcers were talking about how 13 was it 13 or 15 years ago um, however many years ago um, uh, Curtis Axel's father Mr Perfect won the Intercontinental Championship and now here tonight at Payback on Father's Day. Curtis Axel wins the IC title, and he's he's pointing up to the he's pointing up he's pointing up to the up to the heavens. That was a little bit facey for me for my likes liking. Uh, well, I you know I guess you could kind of just look past it because it was Father's Day and he did like win the title that his dad was like arguably one of the best champions yeah. for the Intercontinental title. So. Uh, the bigger question on my mind is, I kind of wonder what he would have been doing last night if Fandango didn't get injured. Yeah, because he wasn't even on the card at that point. Mm. I think they'd have found something for him, maybe even done that match with Triple H. Mm, that's another good question. On what do you think is going to be happening with Triple H and Vince and all that? I heard they well, want to do like another Vince and Triple H match, which is like, like I, why? I, why? I, I actually read that and I kind of like it. I like the idea of them doing Vince versus Triple H next year at WrestleMania 30 with the company on the line. I don't well, I don't think they'd be able to draw it out that far. I think if anything they'd probably do it at SummerSlam, but I just can't imagine Vince being in a match, especially like a high profile match like that is probably a good idea at his age and everything, but I think Vin I think Vince could do it and obviously if he's if he was doing the match with Triple H um you know he'd be all right because you know Triple H isn't exactly going to stiff him or anything. You know um, Triple H will take it easy on him. You know, and uh, uh, they could pro- they could very much sort of do that match. And um, I I kind of would like like the idea of them putting the title on the line because um, well it's about time Vince sort of retired and they could sort of and if Vince is going to pass the company on to Triple H anyway. They kind of need that. They could they they could make a storyline out of it, you know. Do the whole Triple H versus Vince with the company on the line. Stephanie's tied in the middle. Hell, even Stephanie's got new 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 music now. Why don't why don't they even have Stephanie ref the match? Do do it somewhere in, do it somewhere in the middle of the WrestleMania card, and you could have Triple H and Stephanie finally take over the company completely. Uh, then you could recreate the McMahon Helmsley era, which yeah. is actually pretty cool. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I still don't think they like draw it all the way out to WrestleMania. I wouldn't be that surprised, but having like 
nine months build, I don't think people would be interested in that long, considering it's only been like three weeks and people are already kind of bored with it. So they, they did a one year. But, build, they did a one year build for Cena versus The Rock. Well, that's a completely different story than McMahon versus Triple H, though. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I'd be more. I'd be more interested in um, Triple H versus Vince McMahon at WrestleMania than I would Cena versus The Rock. But that, that's just me. That's just me, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose, but you know, we're getting into a bit of a debate here. I would much rather see. I don't. I don't know what I would rather see. I would be more. I was. Why do you gotta make me do these things? I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, have you got a favorite all-time wrestler? No, it changes way too often. <laughs> So who's who's cur- who's currently your favorite? Uh, either Punk or Brian. I'm not really sure which one. <laughs> They're um, both pretty high up there. So, uh, is there is there a period a period in wrestling that you that you prefer the most out of the whole period of wrestling that you've watched? A favorite uh, a favorite feud or something. No, I really try not to go like, oh, I missed the past so much because then you turn into those people who like w- at wish constantly that it was still the Attitude Era when they just got to realize that life moves on. So, for me, I, I just kind of uh, like the press. I try to complain too much and just you know be happy. <laughs> for me, uh, my favorite feud of all time is Mick Foley versus Triple H in early 2000 when it was mostly triple h versus cactus jack they had that um that, that absolutely bloody match at um the royal rumble with the which ended with the pedigree on, on drawing pins thumbtacks uh and then there was the hell in the cell match at no way out that's my favorite feud of all time oh yes when fully retired for like two whole weeks yeah, that was a good match. <laughs> but I mean, um, aside, you know, aside, aside from him having him then retiring for two weeks, um, you know, I mean, if you look at it, if you look at it more from a, I was ten, I was ten when that was happening, I was nine, ten, and I thought Triple H was the, the most evil person in history. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It- when you're younger and you like you're not really smart on the business yet, and you like believe everything that's going on, it's actually a pretty magical time to be honest. It's a really oh, good time yeah. to be a fan during that period because everything just seems just like so much more lifelike. You just really like buy into the characters and believe like, wow, this guy is like this evil bastard. You really just kind of want to punch him in the yeah. face, and I wish yeah. that lasts forever. I am. Um, I I I certainly do wish I'd never smarten myself up. Yeah. I think a lot of people wish that at some point. It's like there are advantages to knowing, like the smart, like you kind of understand things better. But at the same time, that magic and that like that magic goes away of like being a wrestling fan, and like you start to expect things to happen. Like you start reading the dirt sheets, and you like, oh well, everyone says Ziggler is gonna win, so Ziggler is totally gonna win. Yeah, and I. Then you get those moments like last <laughs> night where he doesn't, and you're like, oh my god, the internet was wrong. Yeah, that Ziggler match was the only match I didn't I didn't predict when I was gambling. <laughs> oh, my my accumulator fell down down a massive cliff. <laughs> but <clears throat> I had I had singles, so uh, all good. Um, but yeah, that was the only match that I failed to predict correctly. And considering um the fact that I usually predict every match wrong, uh, that means it was a very a very easy to predict card. That's not necessarily a bad thing, you know. I still thought it was a really good show. Oh yeah, def- Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Um, and um, uh, I um, I don't know. I don't know if you if you caught my tweet about um, if you caught my tweet about the the ending of the pay per view with John Cena uh, putting right back through the roof of the ambulance. Uh, I actually, funny story, I had saw that tweet, like, literally right before I started watching Payback, I saw you say that, how they, you wish they would have added, like, the cartoon sounds, yeah. and I'm like, well, what hole is he going through? <laughs> it yeah. confused me so I, much. Um, but... I, I, I kind of wanted the camera to pan up, you know, like in cartoons, where, like the Roadrunner, when Wile E. Coyote runs through a wall. I kind of wanted them to pan up. And just sort of have this sort of Ryback silhouette on the thing where he's got, where, you know, this sort of like Ryback shaped hole in the roof. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know how they even gimmick that. 
That ambulance can't have had a roof on it. Oh, uh, well, they probably... It's going to have just been a massive mattress, you know. Um... Yeah, well, yeah, there was obviously, like, some kind of padding on the inside of the ambulance, but I'm, like, curious, like, what they did to the roof to have it, like, guaranteed to break. I don't, I don't think there was a roof. Well, there, they probably, they probably just, like, doctored it somehow, so, like, with enough pressure, it would have broke. Well, but, like, you, it would have been enough to stand on, but, like, throwing down 250 pounds, like, would have broken it, so. When, um, when Cena slammed him through, the sound was eerily similar to somebody going through a table. So it makes me wonder if the ambulance, sort of the back air of the ambulance, was literally just a padded up table. Because the, he ne- he never stood up at the back. He only he only stood on that what that bit where he stood <clears throat> to do to do the actual slam. So it, 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 it when he went through it, it didn't sa- it didn't sound like um, if it, I don't know if if you punch the side of a car, you know, there's a sort of the clang noise, the sort of the clang, the sort of the metal metallic clang that sounded more like going through a table so i think that mm. was wooden of some sort yeah yeah that's i guess that's a good possibility i know when they showed like the top view of it you can see like that it like bent in on where he went so it didn't just like crumble like a table might have so uh. I, I don't know right Maybe we're not just not supposed to know what it was. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's that that's the fun of that's the fun of being fans. You know, you want to know what you want to know what what happens and all sorts of stuff like that. You know. Yeah, but guessing is fun. So <laughs> trying so to figure it out. So to sort to sort of bring to sort of bring this back around in a nice in a nice um, convenient circle. Um, what 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 stuff can um, the viewers the viewers listeners um people watching this uh Hi. what what can they um what 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 good stuff can they expect coming from you on your channel coming up soon well i'm continuing my leaf green egg walk and hopefully i'll be able to record more pokemon verses with hoodlum scrappy because i have finally stopped being lazy and trained up a slack off like mm. 20 levels so that was fun and yeah just Pokemon, probably not a big surprise, but Pokemon. You'll have to, you'll have, to, you'll have to, you'll have to put a good word in for me with um, Hoodlum Scrafty. I'm, I've, I've been trying to get him to do one of these, and um, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure he's, he's too keen. Uh, I'll see what I can. Do. You'll have to put in a good word for a good word for me. You know, uh, let let him know, let him know that I'm a decent, I'm a decent enough person, and yeah, worthy I'll of, make sure to do that. and worthy of his time. <laughs> But so obviously, um, give the um, give the viewers uh, some information on uh, some of the various ways they can get in touch with you over social media. Be that Twitter, Facebook, Bebo, MySpace, ChristianMingle.com, wherever they can find you. Tell them where that where where they need to go. Well, I have a secret life as a porn star, and you can find me on RedTube if you look hard enough. But besides that, uh, Hardy Tech Yo Yo on Twitter. Hardy Tech Yo-Yo on YouTube, Hardy Tech Yo-Yo on Skype. I think you can see where this is going. Um, just for the sake, just for the sake of um, of uh, you know, people get people getting your name right. Um, might be worth you you spelling out your name because it's not spelt the way it's not spelt the way it's spoken. Um, well, you spelled two different ways. It's either H A R D Y T E K Y O Y O. Or instead of an E, it'll be a three. So it's one of those two ways. Um, and um, you know, uh, thank you for um, uh, giving me some of your time here on here to join me on the chat room. Uh, oh, well, thank you for having me. It's, it's been, a lot of fun. It's 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 been fun, and we'll definitely um, we'll definitely look at doing um, uh, doing a doing a return at some point down the line because uh, I haven't really got anybody to regularly come on and discuss the wrestling pay-per-views with. So um, that could be something that we could do um, as a little thing for these sort of shows coming up. That's actually weird. I was actually thinking about that while we were recording this. <laughs> um, but, yep, so th- thank you guys for watching the um, uh, this episode of Tom's Chat Room. 
do uh, do do make sure that you uh, follow follow Hardy in all the places that he just mentioned, and get in touch with me using my Twitter, which is at Tom Williams nineteen ninety. Uh, do remember that if you like and comment on this video, a nice a nice fairy type Pokemon will land at your bedside table and um, give you a hug, because uh, I could really do with some likes on this episode. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining us in in Tom's chat room. Uh, the bar is closed. The bell has gone, and I, I I usher you guys through the door and out into the cold, dark streets of night. Thank you guys for joining me in the chat room, and farewell, my friends. Goodbye.